making floss tube, made a couple videos, and then so much changed in my life. I was unable to make more videos. Now I'm back. Um, you can see my stuff at Go Stitch That on Instagram and here on Floss Tube. I absolutely love watching floss tubes and I can't wait to get back into this community. A little backstory really quick, if I sound a little nasally, unfortunately that virus that nobody likes to talk about finally caught me after this whole time. Um, I'm at the end of it, this is like day five, um, so I do go back into the world tomorrow. It's just made me very sad because I live in New Orleans and it is currently Mardi Gras week so there are so many parades that I've missed and it's my absolute favorite time of year. So I decided now's the time, let's make this whip parade and uh, try to cheer myself up for missing one of my favorite holidays of the year. Now, I haven't completely missed it, there are two more days left, unfortunately I work tomorrow, but all of Mardi Gras day. I will be able to go to parades. My dad rides in one of the biggest parades, Zulu, here. So I will get to enjoy Mardi Gras, but only one day versus the two weeks that you really are normally supposed to do it. But um, a little warning, if you hear noises, this is my backyard. I can already tell that there's a bird chirping. There is construction going on. You might hear that and um, this is a family home. I have two children and a boyfriend. We have five cats, two dogs, and two bearded dragons. So if you hear some noise or have to stop, that's what's going on with that. So we can go ahead and jump right into this whip parade. So I have been cross-stitching since 2016, I believe. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go down the line and show you everything that I have completed and or am working on as of currently. So there is going to be crinkling you guys. Everything is in pretty much plastic bags. A couple bags that I've made but we'll get into that. So let me make sure the date on this. Yes, 2016. Okay, so I had gone into a proverbial craft store. I don't remember one of the big wig ones and found this adorable little cross stitch kit. I was looking for something to do. At the time I was living in an RV, I had very little space. This seemed like a good option. So this was my very, very first cross stitch in 2016. It came with like a little plastic, I don't know, uh, ornament holder that I've lost over the years, but uh, I absolutely fell in love. This is what got me into it. So I am wanting to find a special way to fully finish this so that I can kind of memorialize my start into this cross stitching journey. Um, if you guys see me looking over here, I have my tablet over here that has my um, spreadsheet of everything that all of my whips and kind of the order and everything. So the way that I keep my whips is in order that I started them. I like to keep them in chronological order. It just keeps track of them and my ADHD brain, it, it's easier for me to keep track of them. All right, so after this, I discovered um, Etsy and that there were so many cross stitch patterns on Etsy. So that brings me to my very first project. I discovered on Etsy a designer named Mari Bori Embroidery, M-A-R-I-B-O-R-I, -I, I hope I'm saying that right. And this designer had some really, really cute patterns on Etsy. I fell in love with three of them, so I decided to mash them together and create a larger pattern. At the time, I was um, an embroiderist for a screen printing company, and so I had the idea that I was going to stitch these, frame them, and put them up at work. So this is one of the patterns, the avicorn avocado and the avocactus. 
so with this being my very first project that I was creating slash kitting up, I went with, I believe this is 14 count. I just realized I don't have that written down. I'm almost positive this is 14 count white Ada that I got at a big brand store. So obviously I have finished the avocorn. I have finished the avocactus and I am starting or haven't finished the avocat. And this is how I had them. Now that I am where I am in my journey, I don't think I'm going to keep them as just one large project like this. I think I'm going to break them down and create little pillows that I could put up. And I did go and get some Madame Chantilly, oh no, Lady Dot Creates uh, Polar Ice Chantilly that I could put around um, the pillow. I thought that this one would be really cute with this avocorn. The only reason that I have not picked this back up, because obviously, look, I'm so close to a finish, is I very rarely stitch on this high of a count anymore. I love itty bitty, if not full coverage, one over one kind of stitching nowadays. Um, but I think it's really cool because if you look in here, I was just learning everything about cross stitch. So my stitches actually change direction from this one into these, into the direction that I stitch nowadays, which is really cool for me uh, to see my progress and how far I've come. But I definitely need to hurry up and finish this and get my very first project out of my whip pile and into my finishes. All right, and I, I am gonna have to hurry up and throw these all back together because I have, I believe, 37 whips and I don't want to have to spend seven years trying to put them all back. All right, so then that brings me to my next project. So that brings us to whip number two. Um, so in the process of my journey, I had now found Etsy and I had now found uh, floss tube and Facebook and because of that I found a uh, designer cunning cross stitch and at the time he had created this free sale letters to Hogwarts and I thought that was just absolutely amazing a that it was free because I was new into the cross stitch world and be just the I don't know if you guys have seen this, it's an old um, Sal at this point, and of course, if you guys don't know, Sal is a stitch along. Um, and I was also just really intrigued with what a Sal was, and um, it really brought me into the community. Unfortunately, again, this is on a much bigger stitch than I normally do. This is 14 count oatmeal Ada from a big box store. Um, I had originally started this for my oldest son. Um, unfortunately, due to a lot of the views of the writer of the book, um, I lost some traction in this because my oldest son will no longer like it. However, because it is my second project and all the amazing work that Cunning um, Cross Stitch has put into this, I am going to finish this. It's just going to stay with me instead of going to my oldest. This one is a Choose Your Own Adventure style. So you Every single one of these um, different letters are completely customizable and there's so many options. The amount of work that went into this style is unbelievable, quite honestly. I absolutely love all the work that I've put into here. I've learned so much during this particular um, project and I absolutely love it. It's stunning. And I really need to get back to it and finish it. Like I said, it just doesn't get pulled out very often because it is so large. But look at that. Look at the flag. It's it's stunning. It really is. I love it. All right. So that brings us to whip number three. So whip number three. I discovered very, very quickly with this project that I absolutely love Sal's. It kept me motivated and 
like I said, it brought me a sense of community. Almost all styles have Facebook groups where you interact with other people, and it was the very first time that I started seeing people alter and change patterns, and it really just opened up a whole new world for me. So, again, since I said I had just discovered Facebook, I found who is now one of my all-time favorite designers, the Witchy Stitcher. Currently, I am a Witchy Stitcher patron. I have a bunch of Witchy Stitcher, uh, either patterns that I've purchased to put in my whip pile or in my whip pile. I think she's an absolutely amazing designer. At the time, she was running a sal called the Chopping Mall. I absolutely fell in love with this pattern. Um, side note really quickly. Um, so this is how I label all of my stuff. The order in which I started it so even if I finished a project I don't restart my numbers so hopefully when I'm like a hundred and something if I live that long I will have crazy high numbers because that's how many I've stitched in my entire life um, and then this bag is one of my bags that I stitched um, I have a bunch of these I started sewing when I was 11 so sewing has always been something that I do um, this is used to hang my bags and then inside too um, if I have rings that I have uh, floss drops and stuff on, I can connect them here um, to keep inside my bag. But that was a side note. So again, whip number three is the chopping mall. I, this style ended so long ago. And again, with sales, it's less for me about actually keeping up with the style and more about the community and the people and just staying motivated, seeing all the beautiful projects and eventually they will all be done, right? Um, this fabric right here, I dyed myself to get this beautiful, um, wait, let me make sure that's right. Because I think that's right. Let me check in here. Because see, I hand dyed one. Yes, okay, I did dye this. I purchased it, and somewhere on here, I believe it's 16 count, that I dyed myself. This is where I'm, oh. Not the back. Well, you can see the back. This is where I am. Obsessed with this pattern. First of all, I love all things spooky. I am a big horror movie buff. I have in the past been store managers at Spirit Halloween. So this is something that goes right up my alley. I absolutely love how each room feels like its own finish, which has kept me going. There's an unbelievable amount of stitches in this <laughs> which is why it's taken me so so long to finish this block right here with Sam that is my absolute favorite horror movie I own all the merch all the blankets all the everything Sam is my favorite also fun fact my favorite color is orange so hence the hair anything orange is right up my alley I am so close to a finish on this one I really need to bring this out and finish it. I think my thing with this one is that I don't want to finish it. I've had so much fun working on this um, that I'm kind of slowing down because I don't want to finish it, if that makes any sense. So that's my progress on this one. For this particular fabric is when I found my local needle workshop. My local needle workshop is Accent in Stitches in Metairie, Louisiana. The women are absolutely amazing. It's family owned, it's mother and daughters. I absolutely love them. If you're looking for a needle shop and you are around the general New Orleans area, I highly, highly, highly recommend them. They are super knowledgeable, they're great. Well, because I discovered, sorry, I have a hair, you guys. I have so many cats. Okay. Um, when I discovered the store, I just had a heyday wandering around looking at all the amazing patterns and everything that comes with the local needle workshop. And because I had been zooming around people's floss tubes and Facebooks and Instagram accounts, I had discovered that Nora Corbett, Corbett, Corbett? Nora Corbett and Mirabilia were and are extremely popular and for good reason they're absolutely beautiful so while i was at the local needle workshop here's my bag for this one i picked up let me find 
Oh, not the pattern. I don't want to show you all the pattern. All right. Nora Corbett. Corbett? Corbett. Y'all let me know. Uh, Mrs. Ginkgo. Again, my favorite color is orange. You can't get any more beautiful, in my opinion, than this. I also love that the girl might not necessarily be white because I do love diversity. I picked up my very first piece of linen in my whole cross stitch journey. I picked up a piece of 32 count haunted linen. And let me see, I'll hold it up like this. And this is where I am. This project has been a journey. Honestly, I'm not sure if this is showing up true. Maybe. This is like a tealy, a muddy, tealy blue. It's looking a little gray on here. It's not. I promise it's teal. Uh, teal and orange happen to be my favorite color combo. This project has gone through a journey. First of all, this is my first piece of linen. My brain had a very hard time readjusting from Ada to linen. So there was quite a bit of frogging, a lot of restarting. Then I, I had had, I think I started with the skin. Then I discovered that people tend to do one over one skin and I absolutely loved the look of that. And I thought this was a smaller project. So I ripped out all of the skin and have done one over one skin now on this project. And I'm absolutely loving the way that it is turning out. And I really need to get back to this beautiful project. And really quickly, since I totally forgot to tell you start dates, Avocado Trio, I had started June 29th of 2019. So the little mermaid that I have was back in 2016. In 2017, there was another little ornament that I did. I can't find it, I don't know what it is. And then there was a little bit of a break, and then I jumped in headfirst in 2019. Then Letters from Hogwarts was started March 10th, 2020. Chopping Mall was started March 18th, 2020. Miss Ginko was started March 19th, 2020. And then we're gonna jump into this project. So, in my journey, now I have done cells, regular cross-stitch stuff. Um, I, kit was a first, the rest I've kitted up. Then, in my whole journey, I started discovering Haid, so Heaven and Earth Designs. I kept watching everybody being obsessed, like, I would love to start a project. We all know that Haids are years in the making. And so I kept looking, kept looking, and I finally decided on this particular pattern. Let me, all right, you guys. So I chose the Outer Frontier artwork by Chris Ortega, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And this is what it will look like. Make sure there's not too much of a glare. Obsessed. It is interesting to me because there's absolutely zero orange in this, but all the blues and purples, I don't know. I love this and I cannot wait to put her on my wall in a couple years. So I purchased the pattern and the fabric, which I believe you guys can help me out on this. It's either 28 or 25. It's the one with the orange and the gray pre-gridded fabric. So, you know, Floss 2 World, help me out. Which one is this? And this is where, let me see where we're at, this way. This is where I am at. Let me just fold this back so you can see. Originally when I bought this, I was interested in doing extreme cross country. I have since, which is why you see some stitches over here. I have since determined that that is absolutely not for me. I get too much anxiety about whether or not I have counted correctly and I would hate to have to pull everything out. So this has been really interesting because I've done a couple different types of stitching. I was trying to do 
like diagonal like this. I tried some royal rows. I tried some parking. So honestly, I'm just trying to figure out what works best for me. But watching the stars pop up and come to life in this has just... Uh, full coverage has quickly become one of my absolute favorite forms of cross stitch. I absolutely love this. I think it's stunning. And I cannot wait for a couple of years when this is done. And so I don't have an actual start date on Outer Frontier because I had started this doing extreme cross country, then restarted it. Um, so I'm not really sure where to keep this in my start date pile. Um, I'm going to kind of go back and figure out exactly when this was started, but somewhere in the 2020-2021 range. All right, and then May 2nd of 2020. So I decided in 2020, uh, Floss Tube influenced me to do Mania. So I started a whole bunch of projects in May of 2020. The first one that I started is um, this Christmas set. So this is a, the bag and um, I've got little charms for my little bags. So at my needle workshop, I came across a bunch of these reindeer patterns by Heinzet. Is that how you say it? Um, oops, sorry for the glare. And sorry if you can hear my kittens running everywhere. So at the my needle workshop, there was all of these reindeers, because they come in individual patterns, all together, and then a sleigh. This one doesn't show the sleigh, but similarly to all together like this. And it was stunning. Like it was one of those projects hanging up waiting to be framed. Excuse my cats. So I fell in love, right? It was on an opalescent Ada. I absolutely fell in love. I had to get it. Now I will say this is probably one of my most expensive projects to date because every single reindeer and sleigh comes with six, oh, you're not going to be able to see it. There we go. Servoski crystals. Um, so each pattern is extremely expensive because of the crystals. Worth it. <laughs> Over time, I kept collecting more and more until I had every single one of the patterns that I needed. And I have this on 18 count opalescent Ada. And excuse my threads, I just leave threads when I'm working on stuff. So this is where I'm at. Rudolph, Dasher, Dancer, that's going to be Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and then obviously I will have the rest. Cupid and Comet, I think, are the only two that are completely done. Sans the Crystals. I am a hoop slash Q-snap stitcher, so I'm going to wait until the very, very end to put them on. But it's going to be absolutely stunning. I don't know if you can see the opalescent Ada in my phone light. Maybe. But this is going to be absolutely stunning. It's going to be so large, but could you all imagine this framed over the mantel place for Christmas? It's going to be stunning. <laughs> Again, sorry about my cats. Um, and this is what I was saying about the little flaps that I put in here. So I have rings for some of my floss, and then I also have a needle minder connected on here so I don't have to go digging all in my bag trying to find them. And then on May 8th, I decided that I was going to make my mom a Mother's Day gift. There's one of my cats. That's Velvet. Velvet! Are you going to make an appearance for Floss Tube? This is my youngest son's cat, Velvet. She's going to be three. And all of our cats, by the way, are all beautiful black kitty cats. All of them voids. 
we collect black kitty cats. Like I said, I have five of them. Um, anyway, so I decided I was going to make my mom a Mother's Day gift. So if you bear with me one second, I don't have it with me because I gave it to my mom, but I will pick a pic I will get a picture really. So this was a pattern by Lizzie Kate called Never Give Up. And this was the very first, and I believe only, project I've ever fully finished. I hand stitched everything, got the frame, all of that. So this is what I made for my mom. Hopefully it will, there we go. So never give up, make it happen. Uh, my mom and I used to run a company together and when it would get really, really stressful, we would literally call each other the make it work girls because we always made it work. So it was really, really great for me to make that for my mom. Sorry, I had to, whew, the cats were being crazy. They were hangry, had to feed them. Animals needed to go out. Anyway, where was I? <laughs> um, oh, the project for my mom. That was started May 8th and finished May 9th. I think that was probably the fastest I've ever stitched anything ever. Then on May 9th, um, there was, this was during lockdown. So there was a movement, Be Well and Stitch, where a bunch of designers put out a bunch of free projects for people to do while they were on quarantine. So I picked one of those. I was wanting to get more practice on linen and get more comfortable with linen so that I could do bigger projects. So there was this little bitty scrap of fabric at my local needle workshop. This is a 28 count linen and this is a free project by the Blackberry Rabbit. So this was started May 9th, finished May 11th. And I really had such an, this was such a fun project for me. I really like these itty bitty ones. The only thing with these is like, I don't know what I would do with them. I know um, Michelle Bendy does a like journal where she puts these itty bitty ones in there. So that could be something that I potentially do in the future. So yeah, so this was a quick one and I, yeah, so, and I signed it. So on May 11th, I started what was one of my unicorn projects. So on like every single floss tube that I was watching, I feel like almost anybody who is anybody in the cross stitch world has stitched this pattern. I don't remember when it came out, but it's been a very, very popular one. And that is the Quilting Bee by, who are you by? Sorry about all the crinkling, you guys. The Blue Flower. So, the Quilting Bee by the Blue Flower. Like I said, super, super popular pattern. I don't know what it is about this pattern. I am a quilter, so I do quilt, I do sew. Maybe it's that. Maybe it was the colors I was drawn to. I'm not really sure. But this is also the very first project that I bought Fancy Floss for. I had stitched in DMC all the way up until now. Um, and so I got a piece of 36 count Edinburgh Country Vintage Mocha to do this, which I believe is the called for. If it's not the called for, it's similar. Then I was unable, because it, it was locked down, I was unable to find some of the fancy flosses that it wanted you to do. So the ones I couldn't find, let me show it to you real quick and then I'll tell you. So this is where I am. So the fancy floss, for the wings was supposed to be, I believe, Mountain Mist, and I could not find Mountain Mist. Also, the brown is supposed to be, 
I don't remember now. Hold on. I can tell you. So wait, it was supposed to be, okay, Mountain Mist, Piney Woods, and Mustard Seed. I could not find those. So to replace Mountain Mist, I ended up going with Crescent Colors Snips and Snails, which is this really pretty like mint green to lilac color. Can you even see that? Is it showing up? So I did a lot of research on fancy flosses and how to use fancy flosses, etc. So I decided to give more definition to the wings. When I was stitching, as you can see, this top wing, I stitched vertically so that I would get vertical shifts and on the bottom to give more definition I stitched horizontally and I absolutely love the way this came out. I think that Snips and Snails gives that illusion of that transparent kind of shimmery effect that wings have. And then because I couldn't find Piney Woods. I transferred the color, one second, pecan pie, and then instead of mustard seed, oh no, I have mustard seed. Maybe it was just those two that I didn't have. So yeah, I guess it was just those two that I couldn't find that I switched out. And again, I absolutely love it. This seems like such a tiny project that you could get through it very quickly. Um, that has not been the case for me, but I am loving every part of this pattern. And this is the type of fabric where it's printed. So on this side, it's like a regular, and then on this side, it's the marbledy printed. So yeah. May 14th, I, when I started getting into cross stitch, People started reaching out to me saying that their mom, grandma, auntie, uncle, whatever, used to cross stitch. They're not into it, but they had left them stuff and they started giving me things, which is amazing. I will always take cool cross stitch stuff or, or not cool. I'll take all the cross stitch stuff because I think it's cool. All of it. So I was going through stuff that people had given me. I would describe the type of stitcher I am as more of a modern stitcher. However, I don't like to just put myself in a box. I want to stitch whatever calls to me. So when I was going through all these patterns that people had given me, I discovered this one by Canterbury Designs called the Plantation Sampler. I think it called to me because again, I'm a New Orleanian and plantations are a big part of Louisiana history. Um, so this is what the pattern looks like. I wasn't in love with how hard it was to kind of see certain stuff on this background. So I wanted to change the background color. So I went with 32 count platinum, yeah, 32 count platinum, it says WDW, don't know which brand that is, but anyway, again, this is probably one of the most expensive fabrics I've ever bought because of the size of this project. Now, this is an interesting project for me, my very first sampler, um, this is before I felt super duper comfortable switching out colors, even though I had changed the background. Doing this one over two, because it's linen, one over two. Um, I'm not in love with how hard some of this stuff is to see. I have so much stitching on here. I thought about switching over to doing two over one, I mean two over two and just going back over what I had already stitched and doing another, like just stitching it with one again over. Anyway, 
I just don't know how in love I am with the way that would look. So I think I've decided that it is a sampler. It's supposed to look vintage. So honestly, and the original one, like I showed you, looks super hard to read anyway. So I've just decided that that's the vibe that we're going with on this. So this is where I'm at. Honestly, it picks up really well on camera, so that's good. I don't know. Everything is just so funky about this. Like, why are those rabbits so big compared to the trees? Here, it is kind of hard to tell. Can you see the brickwork? And... If I get this all stitched up and I'm not in love, I can always backstitch things that I want to bring out more. But look at these giant freaking hairs. They're fun. I don't know. I am... I decided to come over here and start a little bit on the pattern. I will say that the fence is so hard to see with the color of fabric that I chose. Um, but look at those little sheepies. I don't know. This is not normally a pattern that I would reach for or is like, I'm not exactly like, oh, there's a spot in my house that I want to put this up. I think it's more samplers are such a big part of cross stitch history that I wanted one in my repertoire. And because it was a plantation kind of goes with the Louisiana theme. I don't know. It's been super fun to work on. I'm not exactly sure what of this I'm going to change. So it says, to those who came before me, this work and de I dedicate for simple pleasures they did seek and with their hands did make. So it is cute. And then it has wrought by, uh, obviously I will put my name and year I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to do this alphabet and everything up here. Possibly because that is the whole sampler feel. I don't know. We'll see once I get to this part if I feel like continuing. We shall see. All right. So next, May 16th, I started Ink Circles, Reflections, NOLA. Again, I'm a New Orleans baby. You can see the masks and all sorts of fun stuff in here, Florida de Lis. But I am, my birthday is in February. It's coming up this week. Um, so I decided that I wanted this to reflect more Mardi Gras colors because Mardi Gras is my favorite holiday. Again, like I said, and I'm missing it such a bummer. So I found this beautiful fabric at my local needle workshop. It is a 16 count Ada in the colorway flapper. It is this beautiful mottled purple. Love it. And then I decided that I'm going to stitch it because this is a single color project in Threadworks Mardi Gras. Beautiful. Because if you don't know, Mardi Gras colors are purple, green, and gold. And so the way that Ink Circles does their, most of their, if not all of their patterns, is it's like, a it's a quarter, and then it just repeats itself going around to create the square. And I am so sad to say that there's not a lot of progress on this. This is where I'm at. I love the fabric choice. I love the floss choice. I will say that when you have a highly variegated floss like this in a pattern like this, sometimes it can be harder to see the designs within, but that can also be really cool. So when you're staring at it on the wall, you really kind of deep dive into it. I think the reason that I don't pick this up as much as others is that I'm normally a loop starter and obviously when you're doing fancy floss like this, you can't do a loop start. 
However, this is linen, so, I mean, this is Ada too, so it is a little bit harder for me to start and stop because I prefer to stitch with a ballpoint needle, not a regular needle, uh, which can be harder to pierce the fabric. This is a super soft fabric though. Um, but I do love this, you guys. I am hoping that I wanted to take this out this month and work on it a bunch, but then I ended up getting COVID and honestly haven't done a whole bunch for the last week. So we shall see. I do love this project. I do have a place that I want. I want to be able to pull it out during Mardi Gras and put it up with all my decorations and stuff. So we'll see. Hopefully I can get to that one. Yes. So this is what it will look like. And there we go. It is a quote from Shakespeare. So fillet a fenny snake in the cauldron, boil and bake. I think it was the orange that attracted to me this, the snake. I don't know, I don't normally go for more primitive looks like this, but something about this spoke to me and I grabbed it up. So I will show you guys where I am at. This one is fun. I have taken this one as a travel piece. Because I bought it from that specific local needle workshop, I got it as a kit. So it came with all the fancy flosses and the fabric. The fabric that I got sent was 36 count tin roof by Zweigart. And this is where I'm at. This has been a super great travel piece. There's not a lot of thread colors, floss colors. It's not a very big piece. I really like this one. There are definitely mess ups in the border. Nothing I couldn't fudge. I'm not gonna pull it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really like this. I love everything about it and I'm excited. There's another one that has a bat on it if I'm correct. Sorry if I'm wrong. I am planning on getting that one, but I want to finish this one first before I grab it out. But I did bring this with me on a lot of different plane rides, so I like that, that it kind of has become my travel piece. So after that, ooh, that brings me to on May 24th of 2020, I started let me it, the Secret Garden Sal. So um, the Stitching Book Club is a stitch group that I found, I believe, on Instagram. And I really liked the thought behind it because she not only released, it is a sal, uh, different sections of this pattern, but also reading sections. So it kind of combined two loves that I have, reading and cross-stitch. I have, I had already read the Secret Garden, but I did keep up with this for the first couple months and the reading. Ended up just finishing the reading and not getting back to the cross stitching. Part of that is because, again, this is linen and it's taken me a ridiculous amount of time to get used to linen. Not gonna lie. And even to this day, after years of cross stitching, if I'm tired, if I'm not mentally focused, it is so much easier to get lost or miscount on linen than it is Ada. Um, so I ended up being off like a half a stitch and at the time wasn't confident in being able to fudge things to make it work because there's a specific way that this gets fully finished, but it's okay. I've picked it back up and I finished it. You guys, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So I finished it this week, just the other day and I haven't fully finished it yet, but it is stunning stunning you guys if you have not checked out her work she has lots of different books at this point but absolutely stunning and it's crazy to me how long this took it doesn't even look that big i did make sure that i signed it i'm sure you guys can't even tell hold on i'm still getting more confident in my signature but VE24, 
That's another question for you guys. With cross-stitching, it seems to be the norm that when signing it, if you put a date, you put the date that you finished it. I'd be interested to know, is that how y'all do it? Do y'all like to put the date that you start and the date that you finish? Because it is amazing to me that projects as small as this take literal years for me. Um, so I was just wondering, do you guys put the year you finished, the year you started it, how do you guys sign your projects? But I could not be more excited to have finished this project. I think it's stunning. This is the called for witch old fabric, which I believe, hold on, this is, sorry for all the crinkling. So this is the 32 count Witchell chocolate raspberry, which is the call for that she wanted you to stitch it on. And I stitched it with all DMCs. She has this fully finished so that it looks um, like a window kind of. I don't know, I can't wait to show it to you guys. I am gonna fully finish it the way that she recommends that you fully finish it so it can go up in my library. But I'm just so excited to finally have a finish, you guys. I have very, very, very few finishes um, out of my 37 whips. So, very excited about that. Number 14 was started May 20th of 2020. This was the very, 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 very first project bag that I ever sewed uh, following a tutorial on YouTube, which is like a free project bag tutorial. I also stitched a floss buddy, um, so it has a pocket and then little pockets for my floss. I have tried floss drops, I've tried floss bags, I've tried bobbins. Currently my absolute favorite way to store things are bobbins. I store the bobbins in the little plastic totes. I think it's easiest to see the numbers. When I'm done using floss, I just wrap it around. I don't know, this seems to be my go-to way. I've tried lots of ways. My thing with floss drops is that I feel like it is so messy in your bag and it's annoying to flip through everything. I don't know, so far, this is the best way for me. I do need to make more of these. <laughs> the Light by Barbara Anna. So Barbara Anna is probably, a, you know, the Witchy Stitcher is one of my absolute favorite uh, designers. Barbara Anna, hands down, one of my favorite stitchers. I have probably the most pat uh, patterns from Barbara Anna. This was a freebie, I believe, don't hold me to that, but I'm almost positive it was a freebie uh, during lockdown. If not, my bad. I got a piece of 16 count Ada in the colorway Copper Penny. this is where I'm at um, I believe Michelle Bendy Stitchy had a hashtag fox in a dress um, where a lot of people were stitching this pattern I decided to go with gold metallic for the light part again though orange is my favorite color I've had so much fun stitching this pattern and I really like the artwork. I love Barbara Anna stuff. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. I can't wait to pick this one up. I do feel like this one is close enough that I could potentially have a finish on this one this year. The way that I tend to stitch my projects is willy-nilly. I am not the one, if I set a goal for myself, I get really stressed out if I can't keep that goal. So I am, a, what do they call it? A swee so stitch what you want, when you want, kind of stitcher. I do have the spinning app, a whip wheel kind of situation, and I will spin that, but to be honest with you, half the time it'll bring something up and I'll keep spinning until I get one that I want anyway. So I've just learned to stitch what I want, when I want. So that was the end of my mania projects. Then I didn't start another project until December 11th. Fun fact, I purchased this project probably back in 2019. It is my unicorn project. It was the 
like if I don't stitch anything in my life it will be this project but I was so I wanted to get my skills up before I started it I had discovered um be stitch me fabrics and had discovered my favorite fabric for this project purchased that purchased the pattern itself all of the beads everything that I needed all of the flosses and then it sat waiting for me to stitch it until I felt like I was comfortable enough with linen to actually start this project so this is Mirabilia Gypsy Mermaid Seahorses are my favorite sea creature. Mermaids, hello, and orange. Uh, I literally, this, when I discovered this pattern, it felt like it was honestly created for me. This has to go up in my house. Is autumn, autumn leaves or fall, autumn fall, Bible stitch me. Don't hold me to that. I'm sorry, I thought I had it in here. And I believe it is a 32 count opalescent linen. It's whatever normal mirrors are on 32, 36, whatever the normal one is. And I fell in love with this fabric. So it's showing up relatively true to form. So it's like an orangish greenish opalescent fabric. So the original fabric is this dark, moody, muddy water, to me, um, fabric. So I felt like this was an upgrade from that, and then it had these splotches of orange, which of course is very me. The only downfall, and the reason this isn't complete, is that I cannot find three of the fancy flosses this calls for. I have tried my needle workshop they've tried last time I checked on one two three cross stitch it was still out of stock so at this point I'm probably going to have to do a conversion it just sucks because they are ones that are variegated and it's very hard to get the same look of the original pattern um, obsessed with the seahorse um, I did switch out these two they are not the original called for us but they are very very close so hopefully i can get that figured out i did decide to go up on the frame and get some of this done i cannot tell you how much i absolutely love this pattern i bought the bead pack so i have the entire bead pack and i cannot wait to start doing all of that all right, you guys, so up next, we have Mrs. Coffee by Barbara Anna and Nick Kamaska. Again, like I had already told you guys, I absolutely love Barbara Anna, and I have her on my Instagram. Well, I saw that she partnered with a another cross-stitch designer, Nick Kamaska, and they created a kit for this pattern, Mrs. Coffee. Now, it took forever, like six months, for me to receive this kit, um, but it was so worth it. I have finished this project, which is exciting. I did it on the Kit Ada. It did not tell me what kind or name or anything. It is a linen, and with the kit flosses, so this is how the kit flosses came on a DMC card. And this is honestly everything I had left over from the kit. I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're thinking about getting a Nick Moscow kit, whether it's a Barbara Anna one or not, I highly recommend them. I really is so much fun. And I really did like this fabric. All right. And here she is all finished. And I cannot wait to fully finish her and put her um, in my little coffee nook because that's what I had originally did. Again, the orange hair, very much giving kind of the queen from Alice in Wonderland vibes. So I kind of think of her as like the queen of coffee, which is very much me. I cannot function in the morning without coffee. Um, and I did finish it. Um, 
sign it, I mean. So yes. Uh, I absolutely love her. I don't know what it is about Barbara Anna Designs. I don't know if it's the colors, the design, all of it, but it, it completely draws to me. And this was no feat. There's so much stitching in this, but I really did love every single minute of it. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love her. She looks so good. All right, the next one is a Haid. So when I was going through the process of deciding that I didn't want to stitch my Outer Frontier Haid Extreme Cross Country, I decided that I wanted to get a smaller project to start and get a feel for how I really wanted to stitch that one. All right, so this is Story Keep, The Witch's Apprentice, artwork by Lisa Parker. Um, it's a Heaven and Earth Designs. And so Story Keeps for Heaven and Earth Designs are sections of a bigger piece of art. As I told you guys, I am a black cat mommy. I have five. I love them. And I love all things spooky, Halloween, and witchy. So this was the one that I picked. Look at that beautiful little void casting a spell into the ball. Sorry, it's gonna adjust. All right. Now, I cut this piece of fabric. Like I said, I didn't really have any, I will probably end up framing and putting this one up, but it was more of a practice piece for my bigger hate. So because of that, I have very little margins on either side. And when I tell you that I started this project so many times, you guys. Um, so I started it here, I started it here. This is all because I was trying to figure out if I wanted to do one over one full crosses, two over one full crosses, or two over one um, tent stitch. And so it's funny looking back on these because I think they all look great. But I ended up on this one doing one over one full crosses. The reason that I have all this taped is because look at my teeny tiny itty bitty baby margins. Like I said, I just cut this off. I didn't even fully kit this one up. I was just, I'm literally grabbing colors out of projects that I already have. Um, but yeah, so I've started this a whole bunch of times. I did do the math. I don't even think I have to take that out, to be honest with you. I don't think the project goes all the way down there, but if it does, I will um, frog them out. But this is where I'm at on this project. And I am honestly very glad that I went through and took the time to do this. This one is one over one full crosses. My outer frontier is two over one tent stitch. And then I have another hate that's coming up, which I believe is also one over one full cross. So I will be able to see which out of the one out of the different stitching styles I really like. So we are now on project number 18. Um, oh yeah, and the Winch's, uh, Witch's Apprentice was started December 18th of 2020. Then December 20th of 2020, I started the Needle Book by Wild Violet. This was a pattern that I discovered by Michelle Bendy Stitching. She was stitching it and she was making a change to it. Um... I believe so hold on let me bring this up so it's the printed primitive tarot notions and needlebook cross stitch pattern by wild violet cross stitch and this is the finished version um, like how you can turn it into a needlebook which I just think is really really cool I'm not sure that I'm actually going to finish it into the actual needle book. Um, but so the original design says the snipper, the ripper, and the stitcher. And then 
Michelle had changed the, so to one of them, this one that has the needle into the zipper. And instead of having a needle, she has a coffee cup. Originally, I was going to do that. I'm not sure at this point. I haven't picked this up in so long, but I'm absolutely obsessed with the fabric and the floss colors that I picked out. It couldn't possibly be more me. Again, teal and orange. That's my jam if you haven't picked that up. So I picked up a piece of fabric. Oh no! Do I not have it written down on here? Sometimes the my little flossy thing falls out. My fabric thing falls out. Um, boo! I don't remember. Is it jade? I don't remember. But it is 18 count Ada. And I'm using Classic Color Works Lobster Claw as the fabric. And I think it's absolutely stunning. I love the like tarot -y card feel to things. So I have this one completely done. I have the scissors coming in and then I'll be able to decide. I am an avid coffee drinker. So it would be very fitting, but I'm also an actual seamstress. So the sewing one would work too. I haven't decided which one. I really like both. And then of course, I haven't decided what I'm actually going to do. I would have to buy another piece of fabric if I wanted to finish it the way that the designer had it finished in the needle book. Um, but look how fun, you guys. I really need to bring this out and finish it. It's been a really good practice for messing around with variegated floss and the different ways you can stitch it to get different designs. And so I've really been having so much fun. And I'm just obsessed with the colorway. I wish everything in my life was these colors. Just saying. Project number 19 is another sal. I absolutely love my cells. Again, I don't keep up with them in the sense of I don't finish them on time, and that's okay. I discovered the 100 Owl Cell by Owl Forest Embroidery. Owl Forest Embroidery also has a unicorn project of mine. It's their Under the Sea project. It is gorgeous. If you guys haven't gone to see that project, OMG, it's amazing. It's on my list of things to do. To buy the whole kit is super pricey, so I've been saving up for it. Um, but I did decide for this particular pattern that I did not buy their kit. Although, so Owl Forest Embroidery has their own fancy flosses. I did not use their fancy flosses. To be fair, I do prefer DMC. I do love the look of variegated floss, but it is a pain in the patookas to stitch with. So... I had this beautiful piece of green fabric, you guys. It's stunning. I am loving this. And each little owl counts as a finish for me. How freaking cute are these? Uh, I'm loving it, you guys. I'm loving the fabric. Look how stunning. Stunning. I want to say that this came as a fabric of the month or maybe I won it on a Be Stitch Me Friday fight night when those were happening. I don't know if they still happen now that she has her storefront. But I like taking it out and working on a few owls here and there because they feel like mini finishes and it boosts me to want to keep stitching if I'm in like a cross stitching rut, you know? Also, this isn't one that I have fully kitted. I've just grabbed out flosses from other projects. I will say that I I wish that in my cross stitching journey that I had just bought the full set of DMCs because at this point I have so many flosses it's ridiculous because I was kidding up each individual. I do understand how people say that dye lots can be different and it's better to buy everything you need for that project right away but honestly I wish that I had done it differently. I'm going to switch over once I'm as I'm completing projects, I'm switching over to creating a master list of DMCs that I just work off of from there because I think that will work better for me personally. All right, then that brings us to project number 20, which is my temperature library. So 
Christie's Corner, I discovered her on Flosstube. And at the time, so when did I start this? December 30th of 2020. I decided that for 2021, I was going to do a temperature cell, which I think is really intriguing. I've seen lots of different people do them in different ways. And the only downfall is that I fell out of cross-stitching for a while, as you'll see. Like, I, I kept up with it for a little while in 2020, and then I fell off. So I haven't gone back to it. I do want to do a temperature cell. I haven't decided if I want to continue with 2021 and just pull all of the temperatures for that year and finish this out, or if I want to unpick the few temperature books that I've put in here and pick this year and do this year. I will get back to you guys on that. I have decided I did this on a 20 count ice blue Ada, which is so hard to tell on here. I'm sure it's going to read as white. It is a very, 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 very pale blue. And I picked the Fancy Floss Gentle Arts Creek Bed to do as this antique patinaed library, uh, what is this, book case, which I love. So each book is a day of the year, and then uh, down the side I would put the key so you would know you know the temperature for that year up here is where the date's going to be and sporadically throughout the bookcase she has cute little designs that you can put I know there was like a globe a skull all sorts of different things that you could pick to decorate your bookshelf I'm in love with this idea and I want to put this up with my bookshelf again it's just holding me back because I'm not sure I really didn't get that far so do I out do I unpick these and start this for this year do I put it away for a while and pick another year? Do I continue with 2021? I'm not sure, but I will get back to this eventually because I absolutely think it's stunning. Then project number 21, they are tropical pools, koi ponds. This is the start of one of them. Then project, oh, and that was started January 5th of 2021. Then another cell, you know I love cells. Another uh, artist that I am obsessed with, Modern Folk Embroidery. OMG, their, his stuff is amazing. So in 2021, he came out with the Modern Folk Embroidery Cell 2021. And I fell in love, you guys. Again, this is not my normal, like, idea of patterns that I am drawn to. But something about these patterns, a stunning, stunning, stunning. So on January 7th of 2021, I started the Modern Folk Embroidery 2021 sale. It is now 2024, and we are still doing this so but I love everything about it I can't wait to get back to this project it's one of those where every single time I pull it out I want to work on it I will probably work on it today it matches my color scheme as always and it's just so much fun it's only I decided to do the two color version I am stitching this on a 40 count Newcastle turquoise linen and this is fun fact my very first 40 count I'm obsessed it is crinkly wrinkly because there was a tragic accident where stuff got spilled on this thankfully this is not a color dot like it's a color fast so I was able to wash this and save it because I probably would have cried look at how stunning this is you guys Stunning is really just not even the word. I cannot wait to hang this in my house. It's a dream to stitch on. It's beautiful. So there was two different versions. In this section here, you could choose to stitch the inside or stitch the outside. And I decided to do the negative version to where I'm stitching everything but the inside. It's stunning, you guys. 
I have two different colors of orange, the super dark orange and the super light orange on this beautiful turquoise fabric. It couldn't possibly be more me and I'm just obsessed. Obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. Again, I'm not sure if I'm going to finish this where it says 2021 because that is the stitch along or if I'm going to put the year however many years from now I finish this. You guys let me know, but it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. I will probably end up stitching on this today. 23. All right. I've told you guys that I have favorite designers. These have, these designer, this designer has easily probably become one of my favorite designers in the sense that this project out of everything I have ever worked on ever is hands down my favorite project. I'm obsessed with it. I'm in love with it. If I only finish one cross stitch big pattern in my life, it will be this one. This one will be probably the only one that I pay a lot of money to get fully framed. And that is the Dark Queen of the Sea Sal by Autumn Lane Stitchery. Autumn Lane quickly became one of my favorite designers, my favorite floss tubes to watch. I got very immersed in them. I am very active on their Facebook account. And then when they came out with this sal, everything about this spoke to me. She is not a mermaid, uh, but she's close. She's stunning. I kept up for a long time with the sal and then I had a lot of life things happen and I fell out. It is so frustrating that I don't have this project finished yet. But wait, I just, y'all. I got all the called for stuff. So the called for under the sea fabric, which I don't, I don't remember the name of. I will, let me see if I have the little thing. I don't, but I bought the bead pack. I bought the called for pattern. This is the baggie it's in. The way that this was a mystery sale, right? And there were two options. So just letting y'all know if nudity offends you, please look away. There were a NSF option and a non-NSF option. So you could have the top covered or not covered. I absolutely was stunned that you could get the um, nudity version. My absolute favorite. I think mermaids or non-mermaids in the sense should be nude. Um, and then there were tons of different hair packs. I decided to tailor her hair so that she looked just like me. You guys are not ready. Okay, just warning you, if you don't like nudity, scroll. I don't even know what to tell you guys. This is the most stunning project I think that was ever created. Look at her. Look at her. Stunning. I picked out the hair color. Oh my goodness, you guys. Stunning is not the word. There's fancy flosses, there's sparkle flosses, there's all sorts of stuff. I haven't even gotten into the beading or the back stitching. She has tattoos all over her tentacles that I cannot wait to do. I am tattooed. Um, again, like I said, I love um, all things seahorses and under the sea. Stunning, stunning, you guys. So there will be four of these beautiful ladies based on the elements. So Dark Queen of the Sea for water, Dark Queen of the Earth, um, then there's going to be like an air one and a fire one. And I cannot tell you guys how obsessed I am. I mean, just, 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 okay. I can't. I can't. She's stunning, you guys. Stunning. Okay. Let me put her away because we can't spend the entire time talking about her. But this, this, if I finish nothing in my lifetime, it will be her. I'm obsessed. Uh, obsessed. Okay, and I don't know if I said she was started January 30th, 2021. She was a stitch long. I kept up with her for a while, have fallen off, but I need to get back to her. She honestly will be my focus for 2024. I am a sweet wee, like I said, but I really want her done by the end of this year. Then in March 5th of 2021, I started a Sunday ride. Again, it's interesting to me how unprepared I was for this when I thought I was prepared. So, 
This is a cross stitch design by Leslie Rissner and it's called a Sunday ride. And it is, again, I'm from New Orleans. It is a picture of old French Quarter. That's the cathedral. I saw this stitched at my local needle workshop and freaking fell in love. I, oh, y'all, y'all. Again, this is not my normal thing, but I want this in my house. I want this in my house. So, I got a pre-printed fabric that looks like clouds. Again, this project got dirty. My cat's laid all over it. I don't know how I'm supposed to clean this because it's a printed fabric and I don't know if it's gonna show up, but it, it's modeled, it's supposed to look like the sky. Um, but this is where I am. This, okay. Let me hold this the right way. <laughs> Right? Okay, pretty sure it goes this way. So I'm just on the cathedral part. And then again, I don't know if you can tell that this is looks like clouds, like sunny clouds, so that I don't have to stitch that whole part. Um, because this is already completely full coverage, except for the background, and I really didn't want to stitch that. And it is a 32 count summer sky I don't know the name of this. Oh, it's a Jobelin. It's a Jobelin. Um, oh, it was kind of showing it there, wasn't it? I really need to get back to this. It's just very confetti heavy. Lots of, of color changes, but it's going to be stunning. It's going to be stunning, you guys. I lost the pattern for a while, and it got dirty, and I got stressed, but I need to get back to that. And it brings me to project number 25. Our cross stitchers are not new brand newbies I'm sure you've heard of one two three cross stitch I don't think you can be a cross stitcher or watch floss tube and not have heard about one two three cross stitch so everyone was telling me especially during covid -y times one two three cross, cross stitch is where you can go and so I was on there scrolling through things and I stumbled across this chart and I fell in love so this is a Cooler Designs Honey Bee Happening. I love everything. I love the colors. I love all of this. I don't see a lot of people stitching Cooler Designs. I will say that when you go off of this digital image, it doesn't look like anything magical. But then when I have stumbled across a few stitchers who have done Cooler Designs, they're stunning in person, like absolutely stunning. So this is where I am on this one. I was actually just recently working on this one. There's blends in here. It uses a combination of full coverage and non-full coverage. The back stitching, look at this, you guys. It really is stunning. It's so stunning. It's not gonna be super big. I feel like this is the very bottom of the project. Oh, I'm just, I'm in love. Look at those oranges. Land of milk and honey. Oh, I can't wait. I feel like this should be on more people's wish list. I think it's going to be breathtaking and it is definitely one of those that I actually wanna put on my wall. This is by Tilt and Crafts. There we go. I was looking at the Tilt and Crafts because there's so many Tilt and Crafts. I had really only had hates for full coverage. Then people introduced me to a couple different companies who also did full coverages. And I stumbled across Tilt and Crafts. And I discovered this and obsessed, you guys. Obsessed. This is going to be stunning. I love a beautiful lady. I love Marilyn. It is the first time that I'm working on Black Ada. I believe this is Ada. Give me a second. Yes. I understand the struggle now. You have to have great lighting, a ring light, a light under it. There's a lot of things that go into it. Now, the reason that this one has not been brought out, other than the fact that it's on Black Ada, is that I messed up 
these are all very similar whites, grays, light blues. And I messed up, picked up a wrong color. And there's no way I'm gonna be able to unpick this because my eyesight can't really tell where I messed up and where I didn't. For a while, I was going to frog it all out, start again, and then I decided, no, no, I will keep the mess up. If you're very talented, you'll be able to tell. But honestly, after everything's said and done, you're not gonna be able to tell. The mess up is in here somewhere. Um, and I'm on her hair, obviously. So I'm just gonna pick her back up and keep going. All right, so that's project number 27. And this is in one of the bags I made. And she was started January 13th, 2021. Then April 3rd of 2021, I joined yet again another cell. Barbara Anna did a cell called Dreaming Frida. And this is probably the only cell that I legit kept up with. It was a, it's a very small project. I did it on 32 count coral reef Lugana. And I finished it, you guys. I love Barbara Anna, you guys. The color, the design, I don't know, all of it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with her, like fully finish wise, but I finished her on May 15th of 2021. In September of 2021, I was traveling to Oklahoma a lot and I was visiting him and was in need of a project. I hadn't brought any of my projects along, so I went out to a big craft shop and I kitted up this kit. I just found this design on Etsy. And so this has lovingly become my, like, you know, when I travel, when I had traveled to see him before he moved down here and moved in with me, piece and I really need to take it out and finish it. It's not one that I'm gonna put on the wall or anything, it's just sentimental. It's on this pre-printed like uh, granite type fabric I got from one of those big box stores. It's an 18 count. And so I've lovingly nicknamed this OK Cats for Oklahoma Cats. I don't remember, I think it's called like Cats or Cat Tree. Um, but just how fun are these? I just needed something fun to occupy my time. And they're just super fun. Start anything until January 1st of 2022. And the Witches Garden Crafts had a cell that was starting. And I had lost my stitchy bug for a while. So this cell yanked me back in to cross stitching. It's the Tarot Cell by Witch's Garden Craft. And again, I did not keep up with it. However, I do want to be motivated to get back into this. This piece of fabric I bought from Joann's. I used to work at Joann's. So this was a regular white piece of linen. So I didn't even know the count or anything that I dyed. And I did this a long time ago to start my uh, chopping mall salon. However, I couldn't figure out the count and it was stressing me out. I have now figured it out. I know how to do it. I'm very familiar with linen. And so this is where I'm at. I decided for my tarot, I wanted half to be black and gold and half to be white and silver. And I each, each month she did two cards so i have the joker i'm trying to remember the joker i know this one's the joker i think this is the empress and i don't remember i have taken the liberty to change colors as i go obviously orange and purple is more my vibe i did um metallic for the gold and i will be doing metallic for the silver And I have not decided the base color that I'm gonna do for each card. Originally, I was gonna do gold and silver put together, 
but I think it's going to be kind of muddled. So I don't know. Let me know what y'all think. I love how each card feels like a finish. And I have decided that for each card, I pick certain fancy flosses to add to it. So everyone has like a metallic or sparkle in it. And like I said, because I hand dyed this, I'm really not sure. To me, it's reading like a 16, between a 16 and 18 count. And this was, like I said, started January 1st. Then there's a huge gap of starting things because I had so many projects that I was like, I need to not start things. I need to just continually work on what I have. So I didn't start anything until July 3rd of 2022. So Butterfly Cloche. By Liz Matthews. Here we go. I don't know, something about this just really caught my eye. I'm unsure if I'm going to put the 1817 part of it on there or if I'm going to put this year's date or I'm not sure, but I don't know. Something about this super caught my eye. I feel like I'm relatively picky when it comes to patterns because it takes so much time and you have to really love what you're stitching. So I got a piece of 40 count antique white linen. And again, I'm into high count, you guys. I just, look how, oh, I love everything about this stitch. And I believe I haven't picked it up because I don't know where the pattern book is. Cute. But I love this and I can't wait to get back to it. I have another big jump. And on December 4th of 2022, I went back and forth, back and forth, and decided that I had The Witch's Apprentice and I had Outer Frontier. I did not need to start another Hade. But then I found this Hade and I absolutely fell in love with you, you guys. Like, so I also am a multi-crafter. I cross-stitch. And I sew, I quilt, and I diamond paint. And while I was diamond painting, I came across an artist, Mandy Manzino, and absolutely fell in love with her artwork. When I discovered that Hade had a Mandy Manzino pattern called Nola, I had to start it immediately. I just didn't have a choice. So, this is... NOLA by Mandy Manzino, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, and I cannot wait to stitch this in the next 10 years and get this in my house. Are you guys kidding me? Stunning is not even the word. I love everything about this. This sums me up, I think. I decided I didn't need pre-girded fabric, so I just went and got, I don't even know, this doesn't even have the sticker. And this is where I am. Look at how stunning this project is going to be. Stunning, you guys. I love it. It sucks. I spilled stuff on this, but you know what? It's a full coverage. It's going to be covered. It's fine. So, all right. Project number 32. We're almost done, you guys. I have 37 projects. So, project number 32 is the second installment of Autumn Lane's four um, beautiful ladies or creatures. It is the Dark Queen of the Earth South. Again, the Dark Queen of the Sea is my favorite project of all time. So I left at this. I absolutely will do all four of them when they come out. It is kit everything. There was two different fabrics. I didn't, I don't, I think this one was called Haunted. Maybe not. I don't know. Don't hold me to that. But there was two different versions. There was like a oatmeal-y kind of tanny color. And then there was this green one. 
Again, it's a it's like a choose your own adventure stitch along. So there's so many different ways this can look. I'm not even sure on which one I'm going to choose yet, but here is where I'm at. Again, Autumn Lane Stitcher, you guys are amazing. Erin and Cassandra, you guys knock it out of the park. Look at this little baby mushroom. I had to come down here and stitch it because it was giving me life. But I can't wait, you guys. These projects are just stunning. If you are on the fence to stitch them, stitch them. These are my fancy ladies, you know? I just, ugh, I cannot wait. All four of them will be up in my house and be my prides and joys. Then... On December 15th of 2022, which is wrong. I did not start this then. I started this way earlier, but I forgot when. So this is when I picked it back up again. I had very, very few stitches on it. So I just decided to pick it back up. This is a dimensions kit. So I'm using kit everything, kit Ada, kit flosses. This is... Again, this was one of those projects where I needed something on the go um, just to keep my hands busy. So this is where I'm at. And I'm stitching this in hand because it's so tiny. Um, but the confetti on this is insane, you guys. But I think it's going to be really, really cute when it's done. Look how tiny it is. All right, then... There is a massive gap from December 22nd to June 3rd, 2003. I don't start anything. I just work on what I have. Then I became a Patreon of the Witchy Stitcher, like I told you guys. When she released this pattern, lost my mind. This pattern immediately reminded me of my oldest son for so many reasons. And if you know us, you know why. And uh, my son is was at the time moving out. He's since moved back in. But he was moving out. And I wanted this to be a going away present for him. Thankfully, he's moved back in so I have more time. Uh, you guys, if you haven't seen this pattern, it is stunning. Look. Hello, Lika, Lisa Frank's spooky weirdness, and I love every minute of it. I love it. This is, again, on a black piece of Ada, 18-count Ada, and this is the Ouija board by the Witchy Stitcher. And this is such a fun stitch. I'm super close. This will be done this year. And then I am wanting to do a black fla uh, frame that's been like splatter painted with these fun bright rainbow colors and it's it's gonna be everything my boyfriend's sister gifted me this which is a uh, one of those pre-stamped kits um, it's this giraffe fun fact giraffes are my favorite land animal and I feel like this is perfect for when you're just needing to do something with your hands, but you don't want to think that hard because it's literally printed on the fabric. Um, it's going to be super hard for you to see what I have done and haven't done. So I'll put it back here. This is all I have done. Um, and this was done on a road trip to visiting her. So when I go visit my boyfriend's sister, I like to pull this one out and work on it. Second to last project. This one broke my heart, you guys. So for years, I have been watching people complete long dog samplers. And I said, I have to have a long dog. It's also like a Chatelaine. I really want a Chatelaine at some point. So I was looking, looking, looking. A part of me wanted to do Death by Cross Stitch. A part of me wanted to do Pandemic. And then just recently, Saga was released. And I was like, I don't know why. I was like, that's it. That's the one. Um, ran out, bought fabric for it. This is the fabric I bought for it. Let me see if I have the label. Twenty-eight count prank cashel linen, and I decided on two colorways. I started stitching this, 
and then I realized that I stitched it the wrong way. It's supposed to go this way. Yeah. Realized I stitched it this way. So now I have to unpick all of this, you guys. But to be fair, look at this beautiful, stunning color. I don't know if I love this um, size because I feel like, I don't know, can you all see the detail? Um, I don't know, I feel like I'm losing some of these details in this teeny tiny fabric. So now I'm a little heartbroken. I don't know if I want to save this fabric for another project, unpick this. I don't know if I want to keep this fabric and change the floss. I don't know where I'm at. So I'm a little heartbroken that I started this and it was the wrong orientation. I don't know. I don't know. So that's where I'm at with Saga, sad face. I'm hoping that I can figure that out soon and get back to it. Then, last but not least, I just started in January, well technically the very end of December because she released the framework. Um, my very last project to date, for years, I sat back and watched people do the peppermint purple black work cells. Love every minute. I think they're gorgeous. They're stunning. They're lovely. I don't know why it took me so long to officially start. Again, I kind of go back and forth on this. You have so many projects. Don't start another project. I don't think you can have too many projects. I think you should be able to jump to what you want. So I finally jumped in. I decided to take part in the Peppermint Purple 2024 Stitch Along Black Work Style. This one I will be able to keep up with and I'm going to. I decided to go with a free border, a free outline, and three colors. So I'm doing two, uh, a dark orange, a light orange, and a teal, a dark teal. The way she does it is every Wednesday she releases a new section of the pattern and this is where I'm at. You guys, why did I wait years to take part in a peppermint? So she also does two different versions. You can do just a black work version or a cross stitch and black work version. I choose the cross stitch and black work. But you guys, are you kidding me? All right, you guys, that brings me to the very end of my whips. I hope that this encourages me to make sure to do update videos for you guys. So my birthday is coming up in a few days. I'm planning on kind of doing an update um, of like what projects I'm doing, kind of the plans I'm doing and how I'm gonna update you in videos. So I hope you guys have an amazing time stitching. I hope you enjoyed my whips. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.